Today's Wednesday, September 16th, 2015, and you are listening to The Elevator Radio Show. The Elevator Radio Show is a proud supporter of the Elevator Escalator Safety Foundation. To find out how you can make a difference, visit their website today, www.eesf.org. Hey, everybody, it's good to be back after being off for a week, so got a good show for you today. Stay tuned. Here it comes. You're tuned in to The Elevator Radio Show a weekly program dedicated to covering news and information on elevators, escalators, and moving walkways. Produced in the wee hours of the morning, a new show is uploaded every Wednesday, sometimes even before you get out of bed. Listen to some of the comments sent in from our audience. Rob from New York writes, Tom, are you f***ing insane? You actually get up at 2 a.m. each Wednesday to put this show out? Man, you must love elevators. Tim from Illinois writes, I'm not sure why I listen, but ever since I tuned into the first show back in 2007, I've been addicted. Matt in Texas writes, I like your safety messages, Tom. It's important to remember them each and every day. And he also adds, When am I going to win the monthly prize pack giveaway? Ron from California sent this in. Despite your inability to pronounce words in the English language, I tune in each week and am glad that you offer this service to the industry. It's better than Google News Alerts. Sarah from Washington writes, Love the show, Tom, and look forward to it each week. I'm glad I signed up for the newsletter. You provide a valuable resource for the industry, not only for North America, but worldwide. Enjoy the show. And now, here's your sleep-deprived host, Tom Seibert. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Yes, it is good to be here. Very good to be here. Almost, almost wasn't here this morning. Well, actually, I was here this morning. It wasn't... Nothing uh, earth-shattering happened on the way into uh, to work or to do the show, but oh man, Windows 10, how many of you out there have downloaded the latest upgrade? Yeah, me. And I, at first I liked it, but I didn't do, I didn't go through and try to test everything before, uh, before doing the show. And I'm like, wait a minute, I don't hear anything. So uh, I had to reset everything up, which is okay, but it's just a pain in the uh, in the butt, if you know what I mean. So anyway, it's good to be here. Last week, I do apologize. I did not get a chance to post show notes or get a show out. Uh, my trip to much longer than I was hoping it was going to take, so um, just didn't have energy to do that uh, after a long trip in and then early morning. Um, as well. So anyway, had a great trip to Kansas City. Uh, the Elevator Escalator Safety Foundation held a strategic planning session, and I think we uh, got a lot out of it in terms of focusing where the foundation needs to be in the future. I'm excited at the committee and the, the board support and uh, the direction we're headed in. And just so you know, the, uh, the, the safety rider program for children, um, the characters are going to be unveiled at the, uh, the fundraiser in, in Boston at the NAC convention, which is very, very exciting. And uh, for some reason, if you are getting the audio dropping out on this, I have no idea why that's happening, but I have a feeling it is linked to Windows 10. So you are not imagining things if for some reason it's like stopping and then starting, stopping, whatever. So I'll see if I can't get that figured out after the show. Anyway, um, back to the uh, Elevator Escalator Safety Foundation. There are some pretty uh, graphic, not graphic, but important stories to cover on the show today that will make you realize why um, why the Elevator Scooter Safety Foundation should be the foremost uh, uh, news source and, and resource for elevator and escalator safety because uh, the reality is is that um, if we continue to have people um, putting their hands and their feet and where they're not supposed to be when riding equipment, uh, they are going to continue to get um, uh, increase the possibility of, uh, of getting hurt. And that, that's really, really important. So again, to you and I, uh, common sense is common sense, and we are in the industry. But to others, um, you know, a photo speaks a thousand words, and I'll and I'll show you the photo that I'm talking about uh, in China. And just just to look at this thing is like, oh my gosh! I mean, it's just it it's not good. So anyway, but it's good to be here. I will be back next Wednesday, regular show, all that good stuff, um, and. Uh, yeah, we've got a good show. So stay tuned. We'll get right into it. Grab something to drink or uh, eat, whatever, and uh, we'll have you out of here in no time. So up next, we'll get right into the news. As so always, send your comments to elevator radio show at gmail.com. I haven't had a chance to tie into those or get into those lately, um, and uh, but I will. You know, I'll get into them after the show today and respond to those that have sent me emails. And again, if you want to send something anonymously, easy to do. Uh, just send it and then uh, address it to uh, as Homer Simpson or whatever. And 
and uh, there we go. And we'll we'll get that uh, to you. I'll get it out there without. Uh, so anyway, I do not know what's going on with the audio. It's enough to just drive me absolutely uh, batty. So anyway, up next is the news. Let this week's news stories give you a lift on what's happening in the vertical transportation arena. Each news segment is organically dug and fresh with news stories of the week. Got lift? If not, stay tuned. All right, so if you're watching the video in the very poor resolution on YouTube or just listening to the audio and going through the links, um, hopefully by the time you're looking at this web post, uh, (laughs) the spacing between all the article links will be gone and we'll have an image up there. I don't know what's going on this morning, but between Windows 10 being updated and um, uh, I don't know, WordPress, something's going on in the world and I'm just, I don't know what it is. So hopefully I can get through all this without uh, it being too much of an annoyance. So um, anyway, up next, or up first news article of the show, uh, another toddler gets arm stuck in escalator and this is in China again. Um, three-year-old girl gets arm stuck in a supermarket escalator, uh, and it's 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 really unfortunate. But scroll down to the second picture, and what you'll find is an awful image. And there should never be any reason to have any part of your hand, finger, arm, head, uh, foot, uh, foot. I mean, I can understand, but by the edge of the escalator. I mean, I'm not sure what the uh, conditions of this were, but this is awful. And uh, you wouldn't see these graphic images posted on a uh, United States or North American website, but I can't tell you how much this hits home. Um, Again, no reason ever to have fingers, hands, arms down on the escalator stair tread where your feet are supposed to go. Granted, this was a three-year-old. Still, oh, it's terrible. I hope she's going to be okay. Remember, promote safety whenever you can. You are in the industry and make sure um, everybody knows this because it is not common sense. Just go to your local mall and look at how people ride escalators. It's it's insane. Um, again, uh, next article link shows another photo of that. And just as a reminder, fingers, hands, toes, arms should never be by the escalator uh, step ever. It's just common sense. Um, you know, and so that's really important. Um, CRIEnglish.com has a uh, translation. Shopping mall puts posters on escalators to avail safety fears after a string of freak accidents. These are not these are not freak accidents. These are accidents where user error, um, you know, is the number one issue. Other than the woman falling, uh, yeah, that's that's not user error. The woman falling through the escalator, uh, uh, you know, plate. That's a little different. But still, uh, signage. I can't read what it says, but um, obviously, the educational programs out there that can uh, help prevent these is, is going to be key. Uh, standing still effective way. <laughs> this is the obvious. It's said that we actually have to write something like this. But South China Morning Post has an article saying, you know, with the headline "Standing Still Effective Way to Prevent Escalator Accidents." You think? Yeah. Oh yeah. Why don't we just use some common sense here? Um, but but the ultimate, uh, you know. You know, point of this is, yeah, just stand on the escalator, hold the escalator handrail, and you should be fine. So, um, you know, I, I don't know. Uh, you know, unfortunately, we shouldn't need a sign for this, but um, if we're going to continue to see accidents, I, I guess we have to, or they have to, uh, post obvious, uh, you know, information like this. I guess any education uh, and posts on. Preventing injuries is definitely not a bad thing. Uh, next article relating to China in Shanghai. Apparently, 300 hurt in, in on their metro escalator system um, as this is loading up. Uh, you know, when you think about the number of people who ride their system, probably 300 isn't um, isn't um, too large of a number, which is good, but. They're citing that uh, carelessness by passengers was to blame in more than 90% of these incidents and that there was only one incident where the escalator malfunction was to blame without naming the station involved. Uh, Can somebody tell me how they came up with this 
This percentage, you got 90% of the accidents are carelessness by passengers. One was related to equipment. So where does the rest of that kind of fall in terms of percentages? I don't think that adds up. I don't know. Uh, so uh, some interesting statistics still, and I would imagine that probably some of these, um, you know, some of these statistics are probably common at, at any major uh, transit system or anywhere where escalators are used quite regularly. So, and you're not going to see those numbers necessarily uh, here in the United States or Canada, um, I don't think, uh, unless it's covered under the Freedom of Information Act. But, um, you know, probably 300 percentage wise in terms of the number of people that use the equipment is probably not too bad. Uh, but again, probably could have been, a, been prevented at least 299 of them. Um, or so, uh, linked to the, uh, you know, careless rider behavior. Okay, $2 million, uh, a $2 million contract was awarded to modernize the elevators at the Lake Powell Life Dam. Um, that's a lot of money, and apparently the elevators were modded in uh, 1980s, and the equipment is, I guess, no longer available and uh, these are kind of interesting projects. We get involved with them on occasion. But, uh, you know, for something, I don't know how often it's going to be used, but um, it, it seems like a lot of money to, to invest in, in something like that. But, you know, it's okay. Good for our industry, right? So, um, but kind of kind of interesting project. I, I would imagine that would be kind of a fun project to work at, to be honest with you. So, um I think we might have even bid on that. Not quite sure. Okay, cool article coming from the Wall Street Journal. Elevators elevate German city's image. It's pretty cool. Officials roll out red carpet for ThyssenKrupp to build a test facility. If you look at the image here, it's like a spiral test tower, and it's going to be the tallest test tower in the tiny city of Rotwell. That will be uh, one of the tallest buildings in Germany. It's actually scheduled to open in 2016, and uh, I think it's pretty cool. Very cool indeed. So uh, take a look at the poster there. You see like the spiral design that is going to uh, house their, their test equipment. So cool article. And uh, look forward to hearing about that once it's done. Okay, another escalator plate collapse in China. Uh, China in the news quite, quite all over the place. TNP.SG.News. And this one is uh, apparently in July. It's here. Self -design. Okay, apparently on Sunday, September 13th, another escalator malfunctioned in the same way at a shopping mall in uh Liangying, China, but this time around the woman who was on the escalator when it happened survived. Um, okay, now this is not the same accident that occurred where the, the top plate, you know, was loose, but apparently this woman reported that it had a narrow escape when she heard a metal plate behind her collapse after she got onto the escalator. I'm assuming that's the stair trap tra uh, tread or per perhaps a plate behind her. I don't know, but she ran up, shut it down, and good to know that she, uh, um, she knew what to do stop the escalator and uh, that's one of the uh, safety messages that whenever I gave the safety program to kids the uh, rise up sa uh, safety rider uh, kids you know, kids program to my kids school I always talked about where that emergency button was uh, in the event that they ever needed to use it or ever knew that thought that somebody was in in danger so um, again it's a good thing to uh, definitely uh, cover and share with people as well because I don't think people most people know uh, where that where that button is and, and what it's used for. Okay, the AspenDailyNews.com um, has a news post talking about trying to, to take the base village escalator. Tough luck, mutters. Uh, I don't think escalators should be used ever for any kind of tough mutter competition. Not that this was, but apparently a single escalator serving the main portal to the base village broke down Saturday during one of the busiest events event weekends of Snowmass's summer season. Uh, tough mutter Colorado races. And apparently the escalator was temporarily uh, taken out of service when it was programmed to be in the down position. Uh, so, Jim Diaxino, president of Related Colorado. What is that? Anyway, apparently a rock became lodged and actually broke a comb on the plate in the upper landing of the lower escalator. And uh, he was personally on site, observed many of the thousands of participants using the escalator with muddy shoes after finishing the tough mud. Can you imagine what that escalator looked like? <laughs> oh, oh, my gosh. And what the pit looked like? I mean, I can't even imagine. Yeah. So, uh, anyway, I'm sure they're going to have to clean it, get it fixed, and it will be not a cheap um, 
a cheap uh, fix. I, I do not imagine. So, kind of crazy. Uh, anyway, okay, Elevator U attends at APA conference. Um, oh, I did not have that link correctly. I'm sorry about that. Uh, Glenn Duncan headed out to uh, the western part of the United States to attend the APA conference and network with other colleges and universities promoting Elevator U and what it has to offer uh, college and universities in the west western uh, United States, which is great. Very successful conference. I'll have that linked up correctly as soon as I get done with the show, uh, along with some of the edits that I'll make as well. Uh, next news article, New York Post reporting the escalator broken at New Tr 7 train station just after one day. Man, come on, news people. Give, give them a break, for goodness sakes. Um, <laughs> let's focus on the positive. How about that? He starts off saying that didn't take long. An escalator is already out of service at MTA's spanky new 7 train station with open on Sunday after taking eight years to complete at a cost of $2.4 billion. Uh, let me just let you know that the billion, you know, escalator did not cost all of $2.4 billion. But anyway, they have, it's statistically, um, you know, shut down at 539, was fixed by 642. It was taken on a service at 1105 in order to further adjust the handrail tension. And, you know, this is kind of the breaking in period. So, yeah, just give them a little, cut them some slack, please. Just a little bit of slack, right? Hard enough to uh, do your job without somebody like second guessing you and, just looking for, for opportunities for failure, right? Okay, in Stockholm, Sweden, I do not want to subscribe to this. Uh, the local.se news source has an article, second woman stuck in Stockholm escalator. Woman was rushed to the hospital after her foot got caught in a damaged escalator at the Stockholm subway stop. Here, here, hers is the second high-profile accident of its kind in 2015. Um, there's a picture... Let's see what the newspaper says here. I didn't click on this link. I'm just curious to see what. Uh... Ah, it doesn't really show anything. I don't need to show the uh, video either because I don't think we'll be able to, un be able to understand it. Uh, anyway. They... Oh, jeez. Oh, thank goodness. Sorry about that. That scared me. <laughs> okay. Anyway, again, keep your feet away from the sides. I can't tell you how many people I've seen actually run their feet over the end of the escalator, uh, you know, comb teeth, like one after another after another. I mean, it's not there to run your feet over like a ramp. It's, you know, it's, it's pick your feet up. Pick your feet up. And again, I don't know what happened with this situation, but still, keep them away from the sides. Pick your feet up. Let's, uh, let's prevent accidents from occurring because if you're like me and like your toes and like your, your feet and your hands and all that, just, you know, let's ride the equipment safe. Okay, report on firefighters' death release as we get away from the um, uh, the escalator accidents. Actually, there's another one right after this one, but WLMT5 has a report on, uh, and I'm going to play this so everybody can, this is the firefighter that fell into the elevator shaft and died. You've always liked helping people feel better. Well, yeah, That's sure. That's why you should consider becoming okay. a massage therapist. Oh. As a massage therapist, oh, I can't shut it off. <laughs> Take the first step now by calling Cincinnati School of Medical Massage. This sounds wrong, doesn't it? Okay, here we go. So tonight, new details coming out nearly six months after firefighter Daryl Gordon died in the line of duty. And today, a preliminary report explained the series of problems that led to his death. WLWT News Science Brian Hamrick is live for us downtown with the new findings tonight. Brian. Yeah, Cherie, well, it's a compelling report released here at City Hall today. And for the first time, it details what went wrong. It began as a routine fire. It was a foggy, misty morning. But as a new report reveals, this one was in a building with a secret, which turned deadly. Minute, minute, minute. We have a firefighter down. Extremely difficult, extremely difficult. Um, for, for most firefighters, myself included, this was um, the worst day of their career. Cincinnati fire leaders released a report today. It exposes for the first time the multi-layered reasons why they believe Gordon fell to his death in this elevator shaft. We're used to going in like everyone else. Elevators slide open, slide shut. You come to a door like that, you would think it's, as we've heard described, uh, it was either a broom closet or, you know, it could be an apartment. Who knows what could have been there. At the center of it all is this door. It looks like it could go to a utility closet. 
It's actually the door to the elevator shaft. Doesn't look like a utility door. In closet. the stairwell, Gordon and his crew of four meet another team of firefighters. They're with a baby and an adult leaving the fifth floor. By 6:11, Gordon's team splits up on the search for victims. One of the team finds the door to the shaft and marks it. Seen here, Gordon is not with them. At 6:12, Gordon, moving alone, approaches the door in the smoky, dark hallway, opens it, and falls 22 to 23 feet. We believe he did not see the marking. Uh, that was probably due to the heavy to moderate smoke conditions on the floor. And then there's this. The door was supposed to lock when the elevator was on another floor. The locking mechanism did not work the way that it was designed to work. A preliminary report that's also an anatomy of a tragedy. Yeah, it's terrible. I mean, obviously, we don't want to see any firefighters, anybody die in a, in an, in an, a firefighting type accident. Um, and why that door was not able to be locked or shut, you know, I don't know. I don't, you know, I'm, I'm assuming they'll find more, more information will be uh, released, maybe, maybe not. Uh, if you click on the, the article link, you'll actually see, um, you'll see the actual report, which doesn't really go into a whole, uh, a whole lot more depth, other than it cites the elevator company, you know, manufacturer, um, when it was installed, and uh, the fact the door lock didn't uh, keep the door locked. But again, I'm sure the attorneys are going to grab a hold of this and then just get their claws into whatever they can to figure out what, what happened. And unfortunately, we'll never know uh, what, what did happen or, or why the door was unlocked and, and any of that stuff. So it's just it's really too bad. Uh, JamaicaPlayNews.com. Good Samaritan uses pocket knife to free a woman caught in an escalator. Apparently a woman was caught in an escalator with her long skirt. This one kind of shocked me because how when was the last time you saw a woman wearing a long skirt? If you have kids in high school, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And uh, but I'm glad she was okay. I'm glad the uh, uh, somebody was going to give her a hand with that. Obviously, kind of scary. Could have ended a lot worse. Uh, next news article: Elevator door safety uh, sensors fail to avert some accidents. I I can't imagine this actually being correct. Uh, JapanNews.com reporting, um, you know, just mentioning some some accidents that occurred that the you know the reversing edge or revert door infrared device did not uh, sense, which is a little scary uh, because the reality is is that those uh, you know the newer door edges really should sense anything, dog leash, whatever, and uh, for that not to uh, occur is is uh, is kind of uh, kind of scary. So. Um, yeah, there's some horrific, um, but, but again, some of them were from older, you know, 1991, you know, 2006, I mean, dog leashes, there's just, you know, you read these and you're like, oh my gosh, this is scary. So, you know, again, just being aware of where your dog's at, where the leash is at, your, your, your bag that you're holding, you know. Just make sure that you're all together when getting inside the elevator outside. I mean, you're talking about a kid who had a uh, jump rope that was strangled after uh, apparently part of it was caught outside the elevator. I, or They were inside and uh, just pulled up and, oh, it's awful. Just awful. So, you know, it shouldn't be like that at all. So, um, anyway, uh, Elevator World Unplugged has a, a kind of a funny blog post where... Uh, Billboard magazine came out and said, "What song would you want to hear if you're stuck in an elevator?" And this is a pretty, it's a pretty cool uh, uh, piece with some famous stars and uh, and musicians and stuff like that. So, watch the video at your leisure. Um, if you want to, if if you if you do not, okay, let me just back up. Buffalo Buffalo News has a uh, you know recap of what the big articles were September 3rd back in 1915 and if you kind of you know remember well, you don't remember nobody remembers 1915 but back in the day things were a little bit loose more loosey-goosey uh, in terms of safety how we built buildings you know all that stuff and um, so one of the you know one of the uh, articles from here the front page news was a bunch of horrific elevator accidents where back in the day they it wasn't uncommon to find an elevator that didn't have walls so we've come a long way obviously 
uh, in safety with the safety code. And thank goodness for all that. Not to say we still have equipment out there from 1950 running, which uh, isn't any, well, I, how should I put this? Um, is not, does not have the same safety features as something that of today would have. Um, so uh, kind of scary. Another Elevator World Unplugged blog post um, talking about the future and how uh, scientists estimate that by 2030, the number of people living in cities will rise 30% to 5 billion. Uh, we can't spread out unless we go off planet, so we must go up. This is from Risha Sturgeon. This is a quote from her, Risha Sturgeon Hendrick, Elevator World, July 2015. And you know what? It, this is true. You know, you can't expect the number of... Uh, um, you know, the population to go up unless we build, I mean, you know, go up without housing them. Uh, obviously, you know, when you fly across the great country of the United States or, or Canada, North America, lots of open land out there, although not necessarily jobs that we can put a whole bunch of people in and actually, uh, you know, sustain the same level as you might in New York or somewhere else. But uh, it's a cool blog post, got some great looking uh, images and um, illustrations. Encourage you to get that checked out and uh, visit their website as well. In the last news article, if you're looking for uh, educational credit for continuing education, CEUs, or uh, encourage you to get hooked up with NASA International. They've got some uh, seminars coming up. They've got a QI training course in Baltimore, September 21st to 25th. Uh, in Iowa, they've got a code update September 22nd. They're doing a lot of great things. Um, so if you need education or continuing education units, please uh, check this stuff out. If you're in the Midwest, Wisconsin Elevator Symposium is coming up October 22nd to 23rd. And um, I'm hoping to get to that. A lot of other things going on. Make sure you bookmark their website so that you can kind of stay attuned to what uh, what's going on there. So anyway, well, that's going to do it for the show, everybody. Hopefully I didn't blast your ears off. Hopefully I can get everything taken care of on the website. And uh, next week's show might go a little bit smoother. Only time will tell. So as always, thanks for tuning in today. Greatly appreciate that. And as always, if you, uh, you found some value in the program, you want to share an article with some friends and family or whatever, just say, hey, I heard this on the Elevator Radio Show. Greatly appreciate you doing so. Um, and they'll ask you, what the hell's that? And then you can tell them, yeah, this crazy dude in Chicago gets up at like 2 o'clock in the morning every Wednesday and compiles a whole bunch of news articles uh, and then throws them up online for the world to, to check out. And that's probably the best way of describing it. So... Anyway, I hope everybody has a great, safe rest of the week, a great weekend, and in, you're enjoying the uh, Indian summer that you're having right now. Uh, we will talk to you next Wednesday. Again, take care, be safe, and bye-bye.